good morning again. Uh, this should be day three, I think, of uh, what I've slowly become to call Preg Belly Project. It's uh, my new family is formed, hopefully, at this point. Everything went well, maybe. Fingers crossed. Um, so this is day three. Tomorrow we're going to do some really uh, underhanded calculator things. I'm going to show you how to sort of get around the ridiculous end of course test and some of the questions, but it uh, doesn't mean I don't think you should learn to do math. So let's talk about uh, multiplying binomials and trinomials. Um, it's pretty simple. We did binomials hopefully yesterday, otherwise the videos are totally out of order. So let's look at a binomial. Negative 4x minus 5 minus 3x plus 2. Now if you see these together like this, that means they're multiplying, and if you see binomials multiplying, only binomials, I want you to think of the ceiling. Look up, everybody. There's all that tinfoil. So I want you to use foil as your process. So front, outside, inside, last. Uh, front would be these two. That would be negative 4x uh, times negative 3x, that's x to the first, x to the first, so you're going to do 12x to the second power, because remember if we multiply uh, term, a variable terms with exponents, we're going to add those exponents together. So outside would be here, so that would be negative 4 times 2, so that would be negative 8, and there's only 1x there. Inside, uh, I'm going to do negative 5 times negative 3, so that would be plus 15x. And from there, I'm going to look at negative 5 times positive 2 to give me negative 10. Then all I have to do is look to see if I have any like terms, and do I ever, right there. Mark them up like we did for adding and subtracting. So negative 8 plus 15 would be positive 7x. Bring everything else down to give me the final answer of 12x squared plus 7x minus 10. Hopefully, if that'd be the wrong answer, that'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Actually, it'd be really annoying for you because they're paying me to teach you, and then here I go totally ruining it. Let's look at another one. This, is, uh, this problem is certainly a type you could see on the end of course test. The problem with this one is that people will get lazy once I show you how to sort of calculate around some of the questions and not use uh, the FOIL method. This type of problem will not work with any other method. Um, it won't work with the calculator method, I should say, that I'm going to show you in the future. It only works, uh, the calculator method only works if you have these variables the same. These variables are different, so I'm just going to have to suck it up and use FOIL. What's FOIF? I'm going to use FOIL. This is a front, this is a front, this is a last, this is a last, that whole thing. Um, so front... 3x times negative 4x. So that would be negative 12x to the second power, because there's two x's here. Uh, if I do outside, that would be 3x times negative 2y. Now, you'll notice that the, vari uh, that the um, variables here are different. You have x in one, and you've got y in another. But don't freak out. We say that if a number touches a variable, it's multiplication. Well, if two variables have different letters, you don't like do somehow mix them into some weird hybrid letter and put a 2 over it. You just put them next to each other. So I'm going to do 3x times negative 2, and that would be negative 6, and this is negative 2y, I should say, and then I have x, y. You should always try to keep your variables in um, alphabetical order, too. I should, uh, that's probably a really good idea. Inside, negative 4x times 1y. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. x and y are there. The reason that you want to keep them in alphabetical order, because y really looks first, so you'd put down negative 4yx, but sometimes you would miss that xy is here. But uh, it doesn't matter what order you multiply numbers in, they're still the same. 3 times 5 and 5 times 3 are both 15. So just put them in alphabetical order and it'll make your life much easier. And finally, I've got y times negative 2y, so I do negative 1, or negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. There's two y's there, so that would be y squared. Now I look to see if I have any like terms. There's some. So I'm going to bring down anything that's not being used, so bring down negative 12x squared. I'm also going to bring down minus 
y squared, and I'll combine these two into the middle. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10 x y. So that's how you solve it if you have different letters. One thing I would like to note about this problem is the FOIL method is really just a way to systematically make sure that this number multiplies by both of these numbers and our terms, should I say, and this term multiplies by both of these terms as well. You'll see that y multiplies by the negative 4x and by the negative 2y, and that the 3x multiplies by the negative 4x and the negative 2y. So be aware that that happens because when we do trinomials, and by that I mean right now, we actually have to use that information. This is a trinomial. This is what's called a monomial. It is only one unit. There's no um, plus or minus in there at all. So what we're going to do is just multiply the monomial by each of the terms. So it's like a dinner party. Everybody has to meet. In this case, when they meet, uh, they're actually going to multiply, which may or may not be completely inappropriate, but whatever. We're not even going to get into that. We're only going to worry about the multiplication. So 5x times 3x squared. This is x to the first power. I'm just going to mark that out. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. And 2 plus 1 is 3, so 15x to the third power. We've got this one. 5 times 4 is 20. 1, 2x, so x to the second power. And then 5x times 7. 7 times 5 is 35 and I've got my x there. So that's what that monomial times trinomial looks like. What happens if I multiply a trinomial times a binomial? Everybody meets everybody once again. We're going to make sure that the z squared multiplies by the 5z. We're going to make sure it multiplies also by the plus 2. We're going to make sure this negative 3z multiplies by the 5z. We're also going to multiply and the negative 3z by uh, positive 2, or by that 2 there at the end. And then finally, the 1 has to multiply by the 5z, and it has to multiply by the positive 2. That way, just make sure every term in the first uh, polynomial multiplies by the terms in the second polynomial, if they're multiplying. So let's look at the z's first. I've got z squared, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the 1's over top of the variables here. That's a really good idea, by the way, uh, not just me to tooting my own horn. It's a really good idea for you, especially everybody who has an output problem, that you need to make sure that these are marked with ones. That way, when you add them up later, it makes it much easier. So uh, z squared times 5z, so that would be 5 times 1 is 5, and that would be z to the third power. Then I do z squared times 2, 2 times 1 is 2, so that would be positive 2z squared. Usually I'll put a little thing through them to make sure I remind, remember that there's these, or z's, whatever you want to call them. Now let's do the uh, negative 3z. Negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. And there's a z here and a z here, so that would be z squared. Then I do negative 3z times 2. Negative 3 times 2 is 6. And there's no z here, but there is one here, so there's that. And finally, let's look at that positive 1 there. Uh, 1 times 5z would be 5z. And uh, 1 times 2 is just 2. Now I can start looking to see if I have any like terms. Anything that has z to the third power under it, I might want to mark with three lines or one on top, whatever. Two lines here, two lines here, one line here, one line here, and nothing here. So I'm going to combine like terms uh, and put it in standard form. So 5z to the third power is going to bring down. And by the way, I can hear the groaning even from my house, which is a few uh, miles away from the school. This is so long, I can't believe it takes forever. Suck it up and just do it, and it'll be fine. It's for your diploma, not mine. Um, so this is a z squared, and this is z squared. Tell the story, once upon a time, plus 2, minus 15, gives you minus 13z to the second power. From there, I'm just looking at z's. So I have negative 6 plus 5 would be negative z, or negative 1z, but I don't need to write the negative 1 there because I am mathematically aware enough to know what it means. 
and then I just bring down the 2. So my final answer is 5z to the third power minus 13z, even though this looks like some crazy number because I connected the bottom and the line, which it's a z squared, minus z plus 2. So that's that one. Uh, I'm going to let you do a practice problem now. I, I Apparently when I made this, I really got in a mood to write z because here's some more. Um, this would be z plus 6 times the quantity 2z squared plus 3z plus 5. 3 easy, easy. So make sure that you uh, multiply these out. If you are in charge of the video, please pause the video now. That way they have a chance to practice the problems. So I'm going to sit here awkwardly and try not to talk for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause it. And then when you come back, we'll solve it, and that'll be it. Okay, let's solve it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the z interacts with all the terms in the second set, or in the second polynomial. So, uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the 6, make sure it gets to meet everybody. So I do z times 2z squared. Now, because I'm going to be smart about this, now that I'm in the multiplying stage, I'm going to start putting these exponents there so I can remember them later. I'm going to remember that uh, 2 times 1 is, of course, 2. And there's a z to the second power here and a z to the first power there. So I'm going to put z to the third power. Then I do z times 3z. So that would be 3 times 1 being 3. And then I have two z's to worry about there. So since I'm multiplying them together, I'm going to add their exponents and get z squared. Then I do z to the first power times 5. And uh, z to the first power times 5 gives me 5z. And since there's no letter here, I'm just going to leave it z to the first power. Let's look at the 6. So for the first one, for the 6, I make sure the 6 inter uh, interacts with the 2z squared. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12. And then I only have that z squared there, so I'm just going to go ahead and write z squared. Then I do 6 times 3z, that would be 18z. I'm the worst for like crunching in things at the end. And then um, finally I've got 6 times 5, and that will be 30. So let's uh, combine like terms. I've got, mark them up. z to the third power, this is the only one of them, so 2z to the third power. Uh, z to the second power and z to the second power are here, so I read the story. Once upon a time, 3 plus 12. That would be 15. And then I do my z's together, so 18 plus 5 is 23. And plus 30, because it's the only thing that doesn't have a, a variable with it. So my final answer is 2z to the third power plus 5z squared plus 23z plus 30. So uh, hopefully I only put five of those or so, and the rest can be sort of binomials. I'll try to do a monomial times trinomial thing. So these gigantic ones, maybe only like five or six on your assignment today. So good luck, and try to work as hard as you can, and don't quit.